We might be drunk, we might be drunk As long as we are hanging out, you know we might be drunk Raise a glass, let's talk shit Pet peeps, Rex, and a bit Maybe drunk, we might be drunk Yeah Holy hell, here we are It's the holiday season in New York There's a nip in the air Thanksgiving's over, Christmas is on the way And Hanukkah So uh, we're really doing it, good to see you Just like the country, you just slid Hanukkah right in there (laughs) Thought we wouldn't notice No, I'll tell you, this is my favorite stretch, man Yes In New York, it's like, it's getting a little cold But this is when we're still happy to see the cold Right Right? It's not March when we're fucking, you know, a a beaten housewife in the 50s Where we're like, please, just uh, stop Right, yeah, it's like when my dad comes home You're like, dad, then 20 minutes in, he's like God fucking, you piece of shit, you failed out of school You know, your mom hates you And you're like, Jesus so yeah, that's where we're at. <laughs> no, it's it's still nice. I mean, we're doing hot cocoa today. This yeah, is perfect, wholesome. W- with a with a splash. Well, it wouldn't be. We might be drunk without a little bit of Grandpa's old cough medicine. What, what kind are we using? We're going with a nice uh, Kentucky bourbon. All right. Well, I just ruined the uh, tablecloth. Tell me when. Whoa. Oh, all right. <laughs> Feel like Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> We're putting our viewers to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> what what kind of a bourbon was that again? Key West or High West? Basil Hayden. What is it? Basil Hayden. This is good stuff. Basil Hayden. This is a good stuff. All right. I think uh, Pete Davidson Ooh. fucked her. <laughs> Basil Hayden. I think that's Bieber's wife, Hayden. Oh, that's really good with the bourbon. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the sweet with this, that kick at the end. I it's love it. It's almost like a peppermint patty a little bit. Yes. Remember those? Were you ever like a junior mince peppermint patty type of guy? Me neither. It, to me, it was like an adult. Yes. Get it's out like of people here. People who like mint chocolate chip ice cream, you're just like, eh. That had a run in the 90s for a while, and I hated it. I kept my head down. It's like eating toothpaste with it chocolate. Was, it was like cargo shorts. Yeah. You're like, this is <laughs> this is in for a minute. It's not going to last. Exactly. Yes. It's the hoverboard. It's a spinja. It's all that Avril shit. Levine. <laughs> it's all-, all right, skater boy. <laughs> I'll see you later, boy. <laughs> it was, uh, I was never, I, I, I like the new, like, if we're doing, like, birthday cake ice cream, I'll fucking... I'll get down. A little chocolate yeah. chip cookie dough. Sure. Are you, is ice cream your go-to dessert? Yeah, I like it the Me best. Me too. But I will say, when cookie cake came out, I shit the bed. I mean, that blew my mind. Yeah. The, the, flat, the flat cookie like, like with frosting on it says, happy birthday, Sam. Oh, man, I love cookie cake. Cookie cake is good. So good. Remember ice cream cake? Ice cream cake was pretty big. Wow, that was like when the iPod came out. My mom always tried to be healthy with it because she loved. Remember Tasty Delight? That was like a real mm-hmm. New York thing. Mm-hmm. My parents, my dad, fucking loved. That was like, his, <laughs> I'm like, I, my dad must have been killing hookers or something because it, because I mean, the, his worst vice was like, like a scoop of like Tasty Delight. I'm like, how are you? Yeah. You'll have like half a salmon, right? Right. <laughs> I'm like, how is this the bad thing you do? That can't be enough. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's Matt Lauer on the weekends, <laughs> but uh, during but, the day. But you know th- those Tasty Delight ice cream cakes. Those were that place was cool though because you could go in and just go sample after. You, they wouldn't stop you from getting mm-hmm. like four samples. That's true. Is that the one where you you do it yourself? No, that's sixteen. 16 handles. Handles. Oh, sorry. What's yeah. Tasty Delight? It was it was like pre Pinkberry. Yes. Oh. Remember Pinkberry had a run. Did oh, big T- run. Did TCBY go out of business? That was big when I was, was back. Yeah, yeah. they still around? Dude, now, what uh, does that stand for? The country's best yogurt. Oh, I never knew that. It was good. Yeah. Pinkberry had, had a run. run. Pinkberry's like fucking Charlie Sheen. It was it was up here for a minute <laughs> and then went right back down. Too many porn stars, it got AIDS. <laughs> yeah. By the way, how's that? You, you get AIDS now and it's like a news story and then you're fine. I don't, are you fine though? I think he's all right. I mean, uh, Magic Johnson's meeting and greeting. Yeah, but he's so rich. Yeah, maybe you got to be rich. That, I mean, when he got it, everyone was like, he's dead. Oh, yeah. I mean, I remember Carl Malone in the NBA was like, I'm not playing with him. I know. Really? <laughs> Which like, yeah, that is not. Also, Carl Malone had sex with a 13-year-old and impregnated her, I think. So I'm looking that up because yeah. that's slander. Up. The slander. The Look it up. <laughs> yeah. I stand behind it. Wow. Well, he'd be in jail, right? I don't know, dude. Man. That's a slam dunk. <laughs> Thirteen year old, huh? It's a foul. <laughs> oh, yep, there it is. It's yeah. a little forward. What I said, All brother. Right. I ain't wrong. 
statutory rape, 13 Ma- year old. Magic Johnson, though, that was like, do you ever see that wow. doc, uh, the 30 for 30 on Magic? No. That's one of the best ones. Really? It's really good. Is that it was... about the AIDS? Or about... Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. All right. I, I lost a lot of money on that AIDS. I bet against him. <laughs> yeah, brutal. I thought he had like a two-year window. FanDuel. That's what it is. <laughs> this is really good. This is great. Might this be a go-to. Hot winter. See, I'm like down for an art bag or like a PD winter scotch Love or something. Love it. Love PD. PD but uh, if you're doing like a, man, we did that hot toddy episode. Those are fucking nice, Ugh. dude. I'm, I'm a sucker for all these, like eggnog. I can do a gallon of eggnog. I mean, you shit, you know, bile. But oh, man, I love an eggnog with bourbon. I'm hurting. I I did uh, that Chinese food place we went to that tonight. I order there sometimes. It's man, that is just diarrhea city. Right oh there. yeah, yeah. Which that... I think is a town in Wuhan. <laughs> oh, my God. But, uh... Where it all began. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, no, it really, uh, it's really good. That place. Yeah. I got we got the fish and the chili sauce. Ooh, Holy shit! Hey. That's one of the best things I've ever. They bring it in the whole big thing. Yeah. That's an event. That, you're, as you're yeah. eating it, you ever eat something? You're like, this is gonna be terrible tomorrow. <laughs> you just that should be the on the outside of the restaurant is like worth the diarrhea is what it should say because <laughs> you know it's coming. It's horrible. Yeah. Chinese food in the cold is not much better. Like it's when winter time the best in food. New York. Oh, so good. Is that your number one winter food? Mmm, it's probably up there. I mean, Americana is nice too, like comfort food, lasagna, uh, rice and gravy, yeah. and you know shit like that. Pot roast. That's good too, but Chinese something about it. Hot and sour soup, Woo! dumplings. Forget about it. Some spicy chicken, shit mm-hmm. like that. Oh mm-hmm. man, that's like that. Just you, your whole body warms. They have mamoons right by the cellar. They do a lentil soup. Oh, it's great in the winter. That shit it comes in a little cup. It's like three seventy five. Can't beat it. Did you ever go to Wohop back in the day? What's oh, that? Yeah. You know about Wohop. Yeah. Which one is that? It's a dive hole in the wall you place have to walk in downstairs. You got to go downstairs. Yeah, it's open until 5 a.m. So we'd all get drunk after the bar I've and go to Wohop. This. Yeah. It was a big uh, institution on in New Mott York. Street. Mott Street. Everything was like eight cents. It was so cheap. You, you lived like a king in Wohop. Cash only? I think so. Yeah. It was under the table. <laughs> I don't think they were on the up and up. There they are. That's how they served you. Yeah. Wohop. <laughs> There's the oh, stairs. Dude. Yeah. They, some guy tried to Venmo me for he was like he's like I didn't bring cash. I'll Venmo you. I'm like, what do you think? It's my first day here in New York. <laughs> uh, you think I'm gonna get conned this easily? Uh, oh shit! I overpaid you. Can you send me the money back? Then you find it's one of those scams. Wait, at a restaurant? No, that's oh at Mamoons because it's cash only. Oh right, those cash only places like it's weird now because you kind of have to. Mamoons is not a place you plan on going at the beginning of the night. True, it's a true. place you end up. So it's weird that those places are cash only. Yeah. Because cash is, people aren't really caring anymore. No. And we need to come together because you go to some place, it's, hey, we're ca- sweet green, cashless. We're the future, cashless. And then you go there and it's all cash, no card. We got to come together. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. It's getting hard. I also, know. even with the subway, now you do the- uh, The tap. The tap. I kind of like it, man. I love the tap. It's easier. Although I get I get the declined a lot more with the credit card tap, don't oh, you? Oh, no, I don't get declined. Really? No. Uh-oh. What's going on with the finances? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Come on. It just it takes a while to read sometimes. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Do you ever I, Oh, I got to pee for you. I'm on the subway today. Uh-oh. And it's pretty crowded. There's a woman with the bag on the seat. Ah, uh, mm. yeah. Total. During COVID, I don't blame her though. It's like I'm saving this seat for the Holy Spirit. Like don't sit next to me. Jehovah. Don't you feel like she was that person before COVID Probably. though? <laughs> I don't think she all of a sudden became the, I, I get a, 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 a seat for my bag right. person. The bag seat lady's been around since eternity. Yeah. She's always been there, and I hate the bag. Sometimes you give her a look, she's like, you know, she makes a big scene out of taking the bag off, like she's a fucking Mother Teresa all of a sudden. But Here's what you do if you want to be that person. You you put your butt crack in between the two seats. Oh. That way it's a little more sneaky. That's right. a sneaky way to do That's it. That's a real New Yorker right yeah. there. I'll tell you what I don't love is you go to every bar and restaurant and everybody's got their coat and scarf and bag on a chair. You're like, what? This coat is having a better life than me. It's on a chair. I'm, I'm standing. What You're are outside doing? banging on the window. Yeah. Freezing. Dude, I'll tell you, these bulky winter coats, you got to get yourself oh. a thin coat. I do I do layers. I'm I'm rocking the Uniqlo layers, brother. I do layers, too. I got a, I got a long sleeve on under this. Love it. Love the layers. Love. You ever put on a long john, then jeans over it? You feel like you're beating the system. Do you think, do you ever put on a long john? I'm wearing them, right? Fucking oh! now, dude. 
I love long johns. And people say it's a little early in the season. Not for me. The only mm-hmm. problem with the long john is you go to fool around later and your dick smells like a stovetop stuffing. I mean, it's just been cooking and marinating in that heat and that schmegma and the jizz and the pubes and the sweat. And I keep bread down there anyway. So, you know. <laughs> oh. We got a yeast infection. <laughs> but yeah, it's just you're baking bread down there all night. And you're I'm running from set to set up stub- uh, subway stairs. It's it's a little ecosystem. I walked going on. in. I walked in. Uh, you know, in my long johns and my uh, my Uniqlo heat tech top, and my girlfriend told me I look like an old prospector. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, uh, you're fanning for gold. In the kitchen. <laughs> so, That's is there true. a poop shoot on those? No. A poop shoot? No, but there's a fly for your penis, which is more than I can say for those shitty underwear with no flap. You got call that right. on you. Yeah, call them out. Yes, get a flap going. This is this is America. This is quality. I could do this more often. We just fell ass backwards into this, and it's it's kicking ass. And this is real milk hot cocoa. None of that fucking. I hate when you get a a water. Oh, hot the packet. Oh, yeah. Come on. That's what they were serving to Jews in Nazi Germany. Oh my, you got that right. <laughs> they were like, "Here's your ration for the day: <laughs> hot water with a little powder." Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that Swiss Miss was a real anti-Semite. <laughs> well, you could do the Swiss Miss with with, with uh, milk, couldn't you? The Swiss yeah, that's Miss true. No. That's Swiss true. Swiss or neutral, though. Swiss or neutral. That's true. And nothing, nothing but a couple of little those marshmallows. Ooh, just the little ones. Marshmallows nice. are good. Yeah, because you get the big ones and they suck up all the cocoa. <sighs> we talked about the extra thick hot cocoa. I hate it. You can't drink it. Can't drink it. It's a syrup. It's a, it's a it's a puree of just chocolate. You just you just melted chocolate. Yeah, it's lazy. It's lazy. You're showing off, but really you're taking away. Right. I'm I'm eating cake frosting over here at yeah. this point. Yeah. Although which I I could do cake frosting. Well, I gotta... mean, I talk about diarrhea. Ooh, it comes out the same way. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well shit over a a cookie cake and <laughs> spell something. Oh, I I shit in the toilet. It says happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Nana. <laughs> Sorry about the corn. <laughs> what about corn and, and dessert? How do you feel about that? Like some ice cream places, I think they're getting a little carried away and you'll get like a corn ice cream. No, I, I hate it. It's crazy. Get out of here. Madness. Yeah, well, they're getting too uh, too experimental. Yeah. You know, some guy made a cronut 10 years ago and he was uh, got pat on the back. You're not Dominic Anzo or whatever the hell his name was. You, right. you, you're not. You, you're some dude who fucking got carried away. We don't need. You get lucky every once in a while. We yes. don't need this many avant-garde desserts. Yes, there's a classic. They're classics for a reason. It's like when that cunt puts the, uh, you know, the the raisins in the coleslaw. Like, what are we doing here? Raisins and chicken salad too bug. Uh, I'm not a fan. Yeah, you're ruining like a good thing. It does look like bugs. I don't like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not big on the the cronut is. I mean that type of shit. I, I mean, never had it. R.I.P. City Bakery. That spot. Remember that? Mm-hmm. It's closed. It's, Street. it's closed. That yeah. well, they had the the pretzel croissant, which was like Ooh. that was. I mean, that's there, pretty good. There was nothing better. Yeah, that's a you good you get combo. a pretzel croissant. You put the every. It's got the everything seasoning on oh, it. Oh yeah. Game you know, changer. You know, I used to live in the East Village in that Moisha's Bakery, mm. and it would get a, a brick thrown through the window every now and then. It would get spray painted. It's still there. Why did, Why would it get a brick? I don't know. I think because it was the only glass. It was like old school glass with Moisha's, and I think people just, shh, you know, you get bored. It's a pretty, pretty uh, sign. Look up Moisha's if you can on Second Ooh, Avenue. Damn, that looks so good. Oh, that's good stuff. Yeah, I've heard of it. I don't think I've ever been there. Yeah, it's an old Jewish bakery, and it the food was great. It looked cool. It was tile floor and all that shit, but uh, still there. Boy, you yeah. know, Second Avenue Deli went away. Oh, Second yeah. Avenue Deli kind of sucked, though. Oh, there it is. Wait, is that it? That's it? That's a corner place. I don't know if that's it. Oh, that's not it. You're right. That's not it. Dude, the Second Avenue Deli kind of sucks. Really? It's well. so overpriced. You get like a, it, I'll tell you this, like, all right, maybe I'm being hard on it, but like Katz just blows it out of the fucking water, doesn't Damn. it? Am I wrong? I thought Katz, Katz was like is, the hack tourist what? place. Katz is delicatessen? Blows what out of the water? Second Avenue Deli? 100%. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I don't There's think I'm, There it is. See, all the graffiti, but it just keeps fighting. Second Avenue Deli, it, to me, is like, you get a soup there, it's like $9 and it sucks. Damn. Mm-hmm. I think they'll, like, they'll have like a good latke or something, but the sandwiches are like okay. It, it's yeah. nothing in comparison to Katz's yeah. or like Barney or Barney Greengrass or those types of places. Or, yeah, I'll take Katz's over almost any place. Uh, Katz's other than Carnegie Deli, which closed. The Carnegie Deli was dope, yeah. those pickles. Yeah. But Katz's has th- that winter knish, dude. Ooh. It's just called a knish, but in the winter, mm-hmm. it's fucking... Yeah. Even what, the hot dog's there. What's in a knish? Potato? 
It's like a fried potato, but it's crazy good. And you put a little mustard on it. It's like fried mashed potato. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, It's so good. Winter Kanish sounds like an old guy who lives above you. Uh, You got to keep it down. (laughs) Old man Winter (laughs) Kanish. Sounds like an Orthodox Jewish punk band. (laughs) Yes. Winter (laughs) Kanish. Yeah, yeah. See, all these other places, you know, I don't think they have Jewish uh, bakeries and delis like this. I love them. Yeah, they're classic. Oh, yeah. And they feel like home. Something about, man, I just drink way too much coffee. Oh, Woody Allen there. That's a shot. Jeez. Carnegie Deli. And who was the first guy to say that a vagina looked like cold cuts? That guy needs a high five. <laughs> Somebody had to think of it. Woody Allen, he says it looks like a like a cold cut, but when he gets to the very bottom and it's tiny. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Has the man been to right. enough? Right. He can't make a movie now. No. He's done. He's doing a YouTube special. <laughs> <laughs> That's next. Woody Allen's a YouTube, a YouTube I mean, movie. Although his his YouTube movie is going to be starring Javier Bardem. Uh, You're like, holy <laughs> shit, man. It's pretty impressive. Right. Scar Joe is in it. <laughs> if he did an, a comedy album, though, how cool would that be? His early comedy album is incredible. Unbelievable. Great yeah. jokes. They still hold up. They're like evergreen. He wrote for Sid Caesar when he was like 18. Yeah. It was something crazy. He was like uh, absolutely a prodigy. Oh, you look yeah. at his, his body of work. I mean, it's pretty crazy, but like, man, until you get to the <laughs> early 90s, and it gets yeah. kind of rough. And I ain't talking about the movies. Uh, <laughs> Do you want to hear a joke? We won't get uh, kicked off because it's just audio. Sure. You hear Woody Allen joke? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So he got it in there. He, he also has a joke that every comic does now, and it's like a standard Woody Allen joke about – you know, these machines are taking over my job. I don't have a job anymore. Uh, one of them is this little thing. It does all the things I can do, but better. My wife got one and she dumped me or whatever it is. But it's like a vibrator joke Sink. that a lot of comics kind of do. And he did it seven, sixty 60 years ago or whatever. Wow. Yeah, I mean, he That's was a great, great he was a, he would have been a legendary stand up, but he had he wanted to do other stuff. Yeah. Know? Yeah. A lot of people get out of comedy. It's sad. You got to love it. You got to be a psycho. Yeah, but also maybe this was, you know, for the best for him. I mean, he made great movies, so. True. I read his book when I started doing comedy. Without Feathers? Uh, his biography. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I did read about that one, too. But uh, the biography, I was just trying to learn everything I could about stand-up. I was so into it. And yeah. he would puke before every performance. And that wow. meant a lot to me. I was like, this guy, this legend, was nervous. He had horrible stage fright. Right. Loved that. A lot of L.A. actresses do the same trick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, he had some great... Um, my wife says I'm so immature. She would come in the uh, the tub or come in the bathroom while I was bathing, and she would sink my boats. You know, yeah, really, my my uncle's a he's a reformed Jew. I mean, really reformed. He's a Nazi. Wow, <laughs> he's got a million that's, of them. That's a great joke. Reform. Uh, Mike Kaplan used to have a great joke. Where he said, I'm, "You know, I'm uh, I'm Jewish. I'm I'm uh, I'm not uber Jewish. I will use German to describe how Jewish I am." <laughs> that's like a Woody Allen joke. That's like a great. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Kaplan's got a couple where you're like, Jesus. Yeah. That's yeah, next for level. Sure, for sure. Check out Mike Kaplan. He's got about 38 albums. Mike spelled M Y Q. Not a joke. That's how he spells Mike. M Y Q Kaplan. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of hilarious jokes. Oh, yeah. Smart guy. Funny guy. What? Uh, You've been on the road? I've been on the road while I was in New Orleans. Seeing how the was family. That? It was great. Great time. Went to a Pelicans game. Got Did you really? Yeah. Who'd they play? Uh, a shitty team. Hold on. Well, the Pelicans are a shitty team. I know they won. Did Zion play? No. And Ingram didn't play either. He played. Ingram played. He was the he was the highlight. Yeah, he's good. Who did they play? Hold Egan on, who? it's gonna bother me. It's Washington. The Wizards. Yes. Oh, the, the Wizards. Wizards are good this year. Oh though. well, they weren't that night. <laughs> they were fucking up, and we were drunk in the stands cheering on. Uh, they almost threw me out like LeBron. I was like, you hope your kid dies. You know, <laughs> By the way, did you see that LeBron thing? Yeah, that was crazy. Apparently they were saying, I hope your kid dies. So he's like, you're out, you're out. That's what did it. Wow. So everybody's like, LeBron's a bitch, he's a snitch. And I'm like, well, that's a little shitty deal. That's what they were chanting? I they hope were, your kid It dies. was just to a couple, and they were very specific. They're like, I hope he dies in a car wreck, and they were describing the car wreck. Jeez. And he's like, you gotta much. go. Whatever yeah. happened to Boo? <laughs> Oh, right. <laughs> Whatever happened to just booing a team? Exactly, you know, crazy. That's heavy. The Knicks. So. Let's all give the Knicks fans credit. Like they would troll Trey Young. They would just their chant would be Trey is balding. 
Ah. That's you keep it surface. You keep it like you ki your kids. Die. I mean, those are two just sick people, clearly. Yeah, and then she did the cry leave, which was pretty funny. <laughs> but uh, man, hope your kid dies. And then yeah. everybody online trashed it. But I'm like, that's kind of fair. Yeah, it's a little over the line. Damn. Yeah, there was a you know Jay Williams, uh, Jason. You remember the guy he shot his chauffeur? Oh yeah, yeah, Jason yeah. Jason yeah. Williams. By the way, Jason Williams used to play for the New Jersey Nets. He was the leading rebounder for a couple of years. Great rebounder. His sister got murdered when mm. he was in, I think, high school or college. So there was people chanting at games like, your sister's dead, like that type of shit. Fucking horrible, mm. like disgusting people. And he got drunk one night and was like, took out his shotgun and killed his chauffeur by accident. I think so he, was, he was showing him the gun and, yeah. and flipping it around yeah. and he shot him. Yeah. And then he covered it up. Yeah. It later became known as a bald one. But uh, he, <laughs> no, he, uh, he, he shot him, and uh, I remember I met him in a bar in Brooklyn once. I was like fucking, I was like hammered, and we chat for a while. I was like, "You're Jay Jason Williams." Want a shotgun really? a beer? Or? <laughs> <laughs> well, they were just shooting the shit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we talked for a while, and he was, he ended up giving me his email, and I lost it. But I was like, I should invite this guy to a show. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! He's like, hold my gun for a second. Oh. <laughs> He's like, I'll get my driver. No, 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 no. <laughs> wow. Shot his chauffeur, man. Yeah, crazy. Terrible, terrible story. Wild. Why isn't there a 30 for 30 on that? That would be a good mm -hmm. one. That guy's life is crazy. He was a great player. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was like, you know, really just like a, you know, glue He was a bruiser, right? He was a bruiser. Like a big, yeah, okay. Like a, like a kind of like did what Rodman did a little bit. Right, just not on a finesse bad at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Damn. No finesse, but tough. Yeah, shit. Dead sister chant. I mean, that's what these roasts have become. You know, you watch a roast battle now, and it's like your dad got cancer, and your mom's gay, and he got hit by a car, and all this. You're like, we're really up in the ante. If here. I want that, I'll just log on to Twitter. It's crazy. <laughs> it's know. getting so aggressive. Where you're like, I don't want to. I, I like the the roast where you kind of it's like your friends and you're just yes. silly, and you can feel the love with it. Right. Exactly. That's what it's supposed to be. And it's weird to roast someone and have to go. Let me Google you. Let me ask your friends for a shit. Like you was shouldn't molested know this. in seventh grade. All right, let's go. Here we go. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's too dark. That's where they're at now. Yeah. Because you got to keep. Because if you don't say it by them, they'll say it about you. So you might as well. Dina might have had the best roast joke of all time. I remember that one. It was dark as hell. You want to tell Sally? Have you heard it? No. Dave Kenny, who's a funny guy, his mother tragically died in a uh, in a motorcycle accident on the highway. On yeah. the highway, so she goes, he, she died the way Dave lives, an unrecognizable road feature. But you're like that. It's a great joke. But you're kind of like, do you want to subject joke. yourself to that? Yeah. It's like it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that's good. I think Mark it went glitched. viral. Yeah. It's a great joke. Great joke. But you're joke. also like, the dude's mom is dead. Right. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's tragically, like, too. Not tragically. Like, yeah. He took it like a champ, though. He was yeah. like, ah, oh, well done. Huh. Yeah, but you know. I know that. I think that's why comics get. It's so funny much. that we just started by talking about like LeBron. Like that's fucked up. That. But this is funny. <laughs> yeah. But this, but this actually happened. Well, they signed up for it. Yeah, that's that is true. Hmm. He didn't sign up for that. He signed hmm. up for a basketball game. But yeah, there is a line I think with at these games where it's like people are like, well, they're making this much money. I'm like, we well, still don't talk about their kids dying. Like right. that's fucking. You keep it. You suck if you want to go there. I know. And if I was LeBron, it'd be like that jerk store moment. Like I would have to find out who these people are, go to their job, and be like, oh, this is why your dad is a uh, handicap. You know, just get them back. That would bother me that we don't know who they are. He yeah. just has to live with that that kid dead thing from these two nobodies. Yeah, the Pistons also suck, so those fans are fucking angry. Oh, is that Detroit people? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, that was that was crazy, that game. The blood, I mean, that dude just covered in blood, Isaiah what? Stewart. You didn't see that? No, no. Oh, Pull like, it up. I think his name is Isaiah Stewart. He's like, a, he's like a tough type of player. and uh, I mean, the Pistons are just, they're young. They're, yeah. They'll be good in a few years. They got this kid, Cade Cunningham, who's going to be sick, but you know. All right, all right. Well, who won? I think the Lakers won. All right, well, good. Then the the, the and they played there. again a few days ago. And Lakers won again. Are we allowed to even play this? No, no. Oh shit! We so got a brouhaha coming up. This, this, this is what you were talking about, isn't it? No, I didn't see this. Mac, can we play this? All right, we got the okay from the producer. Ooh, baby, he's pissed. So LeBron gave him a fist across the face and cut his eye open. Whoa, we got a melee cooking. So that he 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 calms down, right? Wait, this, oh, this is ridiculous. Man, he's pissed. Wait to see him go after LeBron here. Holy hell. Calm 
So he calms down. Now he's gonna. All right, I'm gonna. Chill. Oh, that's a hell of a hit. He's bleeding profusely from the right eye. I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. Let go. Let go. Let go. I'm cool. Oh, he ran back out. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Look at this guy. He's gonna play football. He's blowing through the line there. Oh, he's like a tough guy. Holy hell. Is he going after LeBron? Yep. Oh shit. Detroit does not fuck around. I'll be there this weekend. <laughs> Michigan. Michigan. Royal Although this, we have another episode coming out first. Shit, so. you're right. It's already over. Thanks, Detroit. <laughs> Appreciate That's a classic, you coming out. club. Oh, yeah, great club. Great town. Royal Oak, right on the outskirts. I always go into Detroit, get the Coney Island dog. Do you really? Shit. Yeah, you got to see the city. Damn, you're, you're better than me. Yeah, it's a 15-minute Uber. Yeah. Maybe I'll go with the feature. Yeah. I had a good time. I was there with DeVito. I, yeah, I have a good time there, man. I like the city. Yeah, good city, good club, and it's a boozy. It's like a drinking town. I think it's a college there in Royal Oak. Yeah, it's a, it's like a nice city. It's a nice suburb of it is. Detroit. Um, yeah, yeah, Michigan's man. got a lot of that. I'll be in Charlotte. You know what? I got to fuck another pee for you, dude. Oh, hit me, fatty. A lot of hotels in, in certain cities, like you go to like Charlotte, you go to like Columbus, or certain cities, they don't have any really good hotels. So the uh, they jack up the prices on the shitty hotels. Oh. So now you're paying like four hundred a night for a Marriott. Weird. And you're like, what the fuck? Might as well pay four fifty and get a nice Sheridan or something. Yeah, I mean it's annoying. So certain cities are like that. I don't, I don't get it. I didn't know that. So how come yeah. you guys don't Airbnb? It's like two hundred bucks for a whole house. I don't. I I got the club to pay for it. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, Cause I usually I'm taking buyouts now. I got to do this buyout thing. You got to. You you. I mean, cause you just some of these hotels. You're like. I know. You got it's. It, you just have a better weekend. You just That's are like. True. I'm gonna write better. I'm gonna. You know. I'm not saying anywhere fancy, but I mean. And sometimes you know. they're far away. Sometimes they're Smell on the thing. highway. Oh man. The ultimate insult was when you were a young comic and they put you in a total shithole and it was like 35 minutes yeah. from the club. Yeah, crackers. So, you're like, so you went out, yes, crackers in Indianapolis. Uh-huh. They, it was like a 35-minute drive and it was a dump. Yeah, right. So I'm like, this hotel is gross as shit and it's you're giving me an hour plus round trip for the gig tonight. Yep. Brutal. I know. The worst. I'm- Just cheap clubs cutting corners. Yeah, I hooked up with a waitress at that club, you know, 10 years ago. And uh, even her, she was driving, and she's like, where the fuck is this place? I'm like, what are you doing to me? I'm like, I know, I know. She's Welcome drying to the comic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Got halfway there, she changed her mind. <laughs> but tough, tough sledding. Because, you know, you, you're you're ready to go to the gig, and you have to leave an hour early, and then you come home, and you get home an hour late, you know? Like, also, you're doing morning press while you're there. Oh! And then also, like, you tra- you're a lot of travel on top of this. You're like, just put me fucking downtown. I know. So then at some point, you're like, give me a buyout and I'll book the hotel. Right. You know? now, but we're... also, you start to play better places and they stop pulling shit like that. I mean, we True. were young comics. That yeah. was like. Where are you at on uh, on the morning radio? Did you ever do Bob and Tom? They hated me. Really? They always hated me. But I remember set up punch. I know. And they still hated me. Mm. So it was kind of special. I mean, I remember I did it once and uh, they, I couldn't get a word in. There was that other guy, yeah. Chick, Chick, who I think is like kind of surly. Yeah. And I think I caught him in one of his moods, and he just, he was just annoyed. Yeah. And I was like, all right, whatever. I was young. And then the next time and I was this there, was a big gig. Not big gig, but it was. you could get some ears on that thing. Back in the day. Back in the I day. I don't think anymore. But like Berbiglia, Nick Griffin, and Tommy Jonigan, they all had like a following from Bob and Tom. I know. So it was kind of I think important. podcasts kind of killed it a little. Oh, yeah. But I do. <laughs> but I do. Th- I remember I did the next time. And uh, I told a story, and I'm like, I know it's clean, but I'm like, they they set me up for something, and I couldn't think of a clean way to go with it. So I told a story about getting jacked off in a town car, <laughs> and I could just see them like, uh, uh. and then as I'm out, he went to break, and he was like, that could have been a that could have been a fine for 150 grand in every market or something like that for what you just said. And I'm like, how many markets? He's like 13. I'm like, yeah, I just cost you two million. That's what happened. <laughs> that story cost you like grow up. Right, yeah. right. Come on. They loved it. They love holding that power over the young nobody. Comics. That could have cost us hundred. It was it was one of the things. Where I'm like, all right, dude. Man, you unloaded in a town car like Jay Williams. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't hit the driver. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God the partition was up. <laughs> Woo! Are there any like uh, cities you go to? You're like, I really wish I could get on this show in the morning, but like, 
Is it like that was one? There was one, and there was a uh, something in Philly that was big. Preston and Steve. Preston and Steve. They're cool though. They're cool. They're really Great cool. They, I, it's funny. I just watched it. It's always sunny in Philadelphia, and they're on it. What? The whole thing was like. You know, they won a prize to get to shoot uh, a shot uh, at the Flyers game. Yeah. So they call into them, and then they're there presenting it to them. Uh, it's pretty – it's a nice, nice little Philly cameo. That's great. See, that's one thing. I know it's nostalgia, and I'm a boomer and all that shit, but, like, podcasts are great. We're doing one right now. But there was something special about going to Chicago or Philly and being like, I'm on the fucking main thing in this town. Like, everybody listen to that, Preston and Steve. It's still, I think it still does pretty well. Okay. It's almost like a Howard Stern in each city. Yeah, no, it's, they're the guys. In they're the city. guys. So it's pretty cool. And then, uh, yeah, there's something about, like, I'm doing an appearance. That's kind of Yes, nice. yes. It'd be nice if every podcast could do that. Like, now I go to Nashville and I do Theo's pod. I do Nate Bargatze's pod. And then you go to this town. You're like, oh, this guy's living here now. It's kind of nice. Feels like the same shit. Yeah. But they're almost, they're not that spread out. I mean- you go to Austin, you can do something. Yeah. But there's not one in, like, Sioux Falls, <laughs> you know. Although that's where, like, radio probably still helps. Yeah, Those true. places, I true. don't know, maybe not. I think they still listen to the radio, for sure. Yeah, some of those cities, you're like, well, you're, like, 10 minutes behind, or 10, 10 years behind, I mean. Yeah. So you're like, this will be. Right. Well, you know what the radio is like? This is maybe as a stretch of an analogy. But, like, back when you were on Tinder... And you're kind of like, oh, who cares? No thanks. Shut up. Get out of here. Fuck you. But if you met that girl at a bar, it might be exciting. Mm. And then you started flirting. And it's kind of like finding a song on the radio. You know when you're on I your I iTunes, you're like, ah, eh, no thanks, no thanks, whatever. But if you find a song on the radio, you're like, oh, this is kind of special. Yeah, nowadays more people will hear about the girl on the bar than <laughs> you on one of those morning shows. Yeah, good point. Good point. But, uh, yeah, no, I know what you mean. You know, you hear something on the radio that you heard a million times. You're like, oh, shit, it's, uh, where am I at? What is it? Uh, do you believe in love? Whereas you would skip that all day on Spotify. <laughs> I but on, know. in the car alone at 2 a.m., you know, you're like, woo, this is fun. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like the fat chick. That, it's like similar. <laughs> it's similar to like, uh, Channel surfing, yes, mm. perfect. It's, it's, you're like, we, we, it's like, the, I'm you. like, I don't want to watch The Office on a streamer, but you know, anymore, I've seen it so many times. But then you, you catch it on Comedy Central, and you're like, that's kind of fun. I don't know what episode it's yes. like. Pan, you forget, like, Pandora is like that is kind of the excitement of flipping when you're right. not hotel. I don't have cable at home anymore, I just, I don't I just have like every streamer, you but know. I don't flipping, there's something about flipping. Chris Rock claims that the reason his special blew up was because they would play it on Comedy Central at like 2 a.m. and people would come home from the bar, like, who's this guy? and then they would got a new audience. Interesting, if you didn't have HBO, he also was on SNL. I mean, he was on a lot of stuff, true, true, but there were way less avenues, you know, there was no Netflix, no uh, that's true, yeah. Comedy so. Central was big back big. then, big. I mean, it made Gaffigan, it was like Beyond the Pale was like huge. God, Dan Cook, crazy? All those Speaking guys. of Comedy Central, did you watch the South Park COVID special? I did because uh, you told me to, okay, you mentioned and? to watch it, it was good, it was funny. I mean, they got 900 mil from Paramount Plus, I heard. Well, that, that includes a couple of movies. Ten movies, I think. Ten? Well, it's like an hour movie. Does this count as a movie? Yeah, I think oh, so. Oh, okay, okay, I see. It's funny. It was good. I thought it was really funny. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was, yeah, it was, I mean, it's all of them as adults. So it's oh, like that's great. Cartman, the best part is that Cartman has become a rabbi. <laughs> so he's got a Jewish wife and cute kids and... And like Kyle, he's being nice to Kyle now. He's like, I've changed. But Kyle's uh, like, yeah, I know, yeah, you did this to troll me. <laughs> <laughs> so he thinks his whole life is to troll Kyle, and you're kind of just waiting for him to reveal that he is. Uh, that's great. It's good. It's funny. Some uh, of the stuff, some of the COVID jokes, you're like, I've heard this. I've heard, but like, what about uh, Jimmy being the host of a late night? The woke. That, the by the way, that's, I had a bit about that. It's funny. Can you tell us your bit? Well, they do a, the whole joke with Jimmy, and it's like, I'm not saying it's like a super original bit, but it's from. It was in I Got This. It's like from a couple of years ago. And the joke, his whole joke is that like every, he's like Jimmy Fallon in mm -hmm. the future or Kimmel or whatever. Mm -hmm. He's Jimmy. It's late now with Jimmy. And every joke just has a woke turn. Uh -huh. He's like, how about, the, how about these Mexicans? And then it would just be like, uh, they're lovely people who uh, have a wonderful and uh, <laughs> exciting culture. Like and that's hard a, workers. Yeah. They're hard workers. Uh, that's that's every turn. Woo! And then it's just applause. And there's applause. Yeah, <laughs> applause. There's no joke. And, and and my bit, I mean, it's not the same bit exactly, but I had a bit where it was like, um, I would say, you know, 
you know the the best friend in the eighties. It's a it's a different bit. It's kind of saying the same thing, but it was like you know. Uh, and I'm not accusing them of taking it at all. I'm not fucking saying that at all. I know they're not. That's not what they do. You want your ninety million, don't you? I want my nine hundred million. Nine hundred. Oh, sorry, nine hundred. Oh no, but God. no, my bit was. Uh, it was like you know how in every sex comedy you'd have that sleazy best friend. It's a different bit. Mm. How every uh, best friend would be like, "Did you fuck her last night? Oh, you didn't, loser." And my bit was like, in the future, they're going to have to make a uh, a woke best friend for these movies. Uh, Did you get laid last night? I was like, nah, we just talk. And he's like, well, sometimes a conversation is even more fulfilling. <laughs> so that's pretty cool, you know? I'll that was the bit. That. Yeah, so it's like, it's that type, same type yeah. of thinking, but right. it's not, you know. Hey, We Might Be Drunk is brought to you by Honey. The holidays are right around the corner, so save yourself the stress and find the best prices with the click of a button. No matter what you're shopping for online, Honey wants you to find a sweet deal. We love Honey. We buy a lot of stuff online, clothing, uh, you name it, food, booze, whatever it is. And it's all there, and there's always a deal. And Honey helps you get that deal. Here's the move. Honey is the free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one and finds it for your cart. It's simple. When you check out, the Honey button drops down, and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. If Honey has fine, if Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. Honey's found over 17 million members over two billion dollars in savings. Holy wow. shit! Tell them how to do it, Sammy. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing on free savings. It's literally free and installs in just a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com/drunk. That's joinhoney.com/drunk. Hell yeah! We might be drunk. Is also sponsored by Bowl and Branch. A better sleep starts with better sheets, and Bowl and Branch is help. You be able to sleep straight through 2022. I like these guys. You know, the lady loves a nice sheet. So does the clan. You put it on your bed. You sleep great. It's, it matters. When what, what do you spend more in than your bed? We're not in a car. We're not on the couch that much. We're not, we don't have a recliner like my grandfather. You're in your bed yeah. every night for eight hours if you're lucky. Yeah. So spend the money. It's worth it. You're there all the time. Bowl and Branch's signature hem sheets are their all-time bestseller. These babies get softer with every single wash. Come in a wide, range of, a wide variety of colors, sizes, and are completely toxin-free and fair trade certified, too. And it's not just their sheets that are made the right way. Their pillows, bath towels, and robes are very soft. You'll be taking extra naps just to cup a feel. Tell them how to do it. I'm getting softer with every single wash. (laughs) Treat yourself and your loved ones to the new standard in bedding from Bowen Branch. Their gifts come wrapped and ready in their special holiday packaging order by December 19th for guaranteed delivery by Christmas. Get 15% off on your first set of sheets with uh, promo code DRUNK at BowlandBranch.com. That's B-O-L-L and Branch.com. Promo code DRUNK. Yes. Yeah, yeah. What I'm trying to say is I deserve that $900 million. <laughs> and, uh, no, I love those guys. I think they're really the best. I really, they, really they, love they them. Really they, they really are. They really are geniuses. They're, they got grandfathered into the kind of couldn't get canceled. And they're animated. They're animated, but the fact that they start in the 90s and it's still the same show kind of helps to make them uncancelable. Mm-hmm. I mean, look, anyone being canceled over jokes is a fucking, it's a joke anyway. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure, yeah. But I think Louie got nominated for a, a for Grammy. Grammy. And Chappelle. And mm-hmm. Kevin Hart. <laughs> oh my God. And gosh. Nate Bargatze. Yeah. Fun fact. And Jelaine Maxwell. So, <laughs> but it's funny. I do hear people talking about her being like, like she's canceled. I'm like, no, she broke the law. There's a this is yeah, not cancel yeah, culture. Yeah. The, some of her friends are like, it's it's cancel culture. I'm like, she's on trial. This is yeah. not. Yeah. There's a difference between right. I'd like to hear material. I hear it's about 15 years old. <laughs> But yeah, does she kind of do it for you, or am I not? She's attractive. She's attractive. She's yeah. got a sexy name. She's worldly and been everywhere, and she knows a lot. She's dined with uh, sultans and uh, you know presidents. And it's so funny. That you're not wrong that she's like, look, she comes from royalty. 
she's comes from tragedy as well. I think her father killed himself. Oh, it was like a whole thing. See, she's lived. But all, <laughs> but it's so funny to describe her as worldly. Yeah, she's worldly, <laughs> man. Best. She's been all over the globe. Young Jelaine was was hot. Yeah, I've never seen young. There she is right there. I don't love that. Oh, see, that's a pretty lady. Yeah. If that was your friend's mom, you'd be like, hey, hey, you can uh, put me on a massage table. <laughs> <laughs> right, all right. Ah, excuse me. That hot cocoa really bubbles up. Oh yeah. Is that her with Is that uh, her? I think it must be her dad. Pretty solid. Uh, I was gonna uh, say it's the guy from Bar Rescue. Ah, uh, <laughs> it's John Taffer. <laughs> it looks like him. Oh, I wonder what he'd say about her bar. <laughs> um, yeah, she uh yeah, she really not a good person. Oh, John Taffer, that guy's the best. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what a mug on that guy. Huh? He's, he's like uh, angry Brad Garrett. <laughs> ah, you nailed it. <laughs> he's ABG. Instead, instead of Raymond, he's like, Raymond, you fucking piece of shit. <laughs> I'm going to take your liquor license. This is a disgrace. I hear he's a great guy, Brad Garrett. That's what I've heard, too. Yeah, I've heard he's an awesome dude. Owns a comedy club in Vegas. Sweet guy. Michael, our buddy Michael Somerville works there. Loves him. Yeah. Brad Garrett looks like smart Michael Cohen. Yeah, oh. he does. He does look. He looks like inte- intellectual uh, Michael Cohn there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the scar. Oh, I can't get them all at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Michael. Uh, Michael Cohn. That guy keeps. Fun. It's funny. I see him in like a Rangers hat, and you, it's funny when you see a guy like Michael Cohn rocking a Rangers hat. You, you don't. You feel like the Rangers are like, can you not? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wait, what did he do? Oh, uh, he was Trump's lawyer. Oh, but he okay. but he used like shade he did a lot of shade and it's like oh he did a lot of shady shit for trump and now he's like the guy turning on trump it's like mm, he, yeah. he he definitely has the vibe of like this is my movie and i'm this is the last act where i've lo- learned my lesson right and right. i've done the right thing for my daughter but you're like yeah but you're still kind of a scumbag though you know yeah, yeah. totally he i think he was part of intimidating like stormy daniels and oh, all sorts oh. Of witnesses. Yeah, yeah. a lot of shady yeah. shit did you watch porn with her by the way i've never seen it what yeah. I feel like you had to. It's for the good of the country. <laughs> just, just to stay informed. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. I mean, also it, it's She's fun attractive. seeing. Oh yeah, it's fun seeing a lady in the news, and you're like, I get to see her do anal. That is interesting. It's kind yeah. of fun. How not, often does that happen? Not a not a big CNN uh, doggy style crossover. Exactly. Unless they start filming Anderson Cooper. Am I right? <laughs> hey, I'd Come watch on. that. He's a Vanderbilt. No, I mean, look at that. that. This is a, a quite a voluptuous lady here. Full figure yeah. gal. Yeah, so she, I mean, she was playing comedy clubs for a while. I know, that really brought us down a peg. <laughs> I just hate when these guys, like, fall into comedy as some kind of last-ditch effort. It like, is like, annoying. Nah. It's like, I get that you want to cash in, but does it have to be the same place <laughs> that we're working? We worked, a really, we worked a really long time to get, yes. to get good at this, so it, it, there is something uh, that's a bummer about it. And I don't even knock her, because, you know, she's like, I'll make 20 grand for to sure. do a night or to do an hour sure, or whatever, yeah. whatever, but, like... It's the people go see. I'm like, who is going to see Stormy Daniels do? People. Yeah. Well, it's people that think it's a funny idea, and then they get there, and probably five minutes in, are like, what did we just waste our money on? I think so, Because yeah. these are hardworking people, I think probably. the president's thinking the same thing. Like, 165 <laughs> grand or whatever, he paid her. That was yeah, for you to not point. talk. <laughs> <laughs> I got a receipt. Right. <laughs> you know Trump is going to like, yeah, that was, I did, I did pay you. <laughs> Yeah, did he? He didn't get the money back. I'm sure. No, did he? I'm. I wonder if he did a D. Uh, what is it? NDA. I think that's what it was. Wasn't oh, it? yeah, yeah. It's well, a she talked. Mm-hmm. So he could sue. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. It's yeah, funny man. that remember we had a president who was like, "Ah, I fucked this porn star. <laughs> it was a big mistake. What was I thinking? She was a trashy whore anyway." And you're like, "Wow, president." Yeah. And he got away with it. Yeah. Well, he's off Twitter. <laughs> yeah, he's off. Facebook too. So Jack Dorsey stepped down. I heard. I saw it. Yeah, I think this big. might be the shift for President Trump to come back on Twitter. Well, like, we'll oh. see. We'll see. I mean, I'm sure he said he's going to stay a board member for uh, for a period. And I'm sure he's going to have him. Like these people that that step down, it's it's usually like. I don't want to deal with this. I'm sick mm. of the being the f- poster boy. Like part of part of the fun of being a billionaire is being a billionaire. So you're kind of like, is this fun? Yeah, be- always being in trouble. Like you look at Zuckerberg and you're like Senate hearing. Like you know you have to talk before like Congress or some shit. Like mm. like is that fun? Mm. Well, I'm ignorant. What does Twitter make a dime? Can it make yes. any how ads? Oh, I don't yeah. see ads on my Twitter. There oh, are ads. There's a lot of promoted of stuff. Really? Yeah, yes, are you kidding yes, me? Yes. Pro- uh, would you ever see them where it just says promoted? Uh, also, they sell money. your information. Yeah. Ah. Uh, no, all these apps make money. I take it all back. They all don't right. make money. Ignorant. 
No, he's worth a ton of money. And there's Jack Dorsey. Look up, look up, look up, look up his net worth. I'm sure it's okay. okay. Now we're getting somewhere. It's got to be a hellish job. He's also one of the only billionaires with a nose ring. So. Ooh. <laughs> Not a lot of them. Uh, he's only worth $11.8 billion. Wow, and he can't afford a razor. <laughs> Jesus. He's a handsome guy, though. Yeah, he's one of my favorite members of ZZ Top, for sure. <laughs> he was great in 300. <laughs> Holy hell. Yeah. Did you guys watch the last episode of Succession? Wow, I did, yeah. Duck Dynasty-ish. I don't want to spoil it, but it was a really good episode. Yeah. Great app. The, the birthday? Are you yeah, the birthday about? one. Yeah. yeah. That's, I mean, that's a good show. Yeah. So good. Kendall is so cringy. Roman was uh, confident, which is fun to watch. I think Tom is my favorite character. Tom's great. 100%. That guy's an incredible actor. Yeah, I got a dick English. like a sequoia, and I fuck like a bullet train. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I mean, Brian Cox. I mean, they're all great. The oh, whole show yeah. is great, but goddamn. So good. I love the... Well, I don't want to spoil it. Hmm. I was well, going to say something too, too revealing of the plot. Succession fucking rules. Only two episodes left. Yeah. Damn. Herb has been fun, too. Curb, I got Evans. I've been saving. I need something to save to just go through. So I've not this watched Curb. This season's been yet. great. It's like yeah. a return to the old style. Good. Curbs. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's fun. He's the best. I got a wreck. Hit me. Because uh, this is a little old. You might have to do some Googling here. But I took a flight to New Orleans. I had the TV. I didn't download any podcasts, so I had to stick with the movies. Love it. I go, what is this movie with Hugh Jackman? I'll give it a shot. Here we go. Blah, blah, blue. It's a three-hour flight. It's a two-and-a-half-hour movie. Prisoners! I hear it's Dennis Villanueva, director, Yes, right? yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. I was I was in tears in the aisle seat. I hear it's great. Unbelievable. It's a little long, but, I mean, it twists, it turns. You think it's this Paul guy, Dano. it turns to be that guy. Paul Dano's who, amazing. Who's going to be the Riddler? What? Paul Dano is going to be the Riddler. Oh, there Batman. you go. That works. Yeah. That's a good choice. We're doing another Batman, huh? I didn't even know that. It's crazy. Is it? Is it Bale? No, it's Robert Pattinson. Ah, jeez, it never What a... Uh, but, but you love this movie. Unbelievable. I showed it to the lady. She was like, this is one of the best movies I've ever seen. It's well Wait, shot. Wait, you watched it again? I, I made her watch it. Uh, I didn't watch it with her, not all the way. But I was like, you got to see this because this is true crime-y, suspense It's right up her anal. And it was... <laughs> it delivered twice. Yeah, it's uh, Jackman's great. Yeah, he, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal has a crazy filmography for mm -hmm. his age. Like mm -hmm. he's in so many good movies. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's kind of crazy when you look at it. You're like, man, his batting average is like he's like Wade Boggs. He's just fucking on base every time. Zodiac. <laughs> uh, I just watched a movie with him that Vitor made me watch. It was about you know the one where they're on Night. a train. Ooh. No. Forgot the name of it. Uh, it was good. It was like a thriller. It was with. Uh, Really, a really good actress, Michelle Monaghan, is in it. Mm. Uh, Get off my train. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wrong uh, movie. Uh, what I mean, uh, broke back. He's in. Oh so many, yeah, he's in, uh, broke like back. Is Nightcrawler was good. Nightcrawler Donnie was Darko great. was good. Donnie Darko, dude, it's bad and average is crazy high. I never thought about it. No, a boy in the bubble took him down a notch. Yeah. Oh yeah, but that was early on. October Sky, I didn't see that. Wait, what else? Eh, what Ultra, make it bigger. Good. What do you say? Can you make it bigger? Oh, I'm sorry. He's in a lot of movies. Inside Amy Schumer. Oh, he's, that's Ooh. a great sketch. I remember really? That. Oh, yeah, they're like on a blind date. It's funny. And they have ferrets. It's funny as shit. Ferrets? It's really funny. Southpaw. Oh, yeah, he was a boxer in Southpaw. Heard that's good. Enemy Prisoners. You loved End of Watch. I didn't End see End of that. Watch is great. You love that movie. Great cop movie. Yeah. Okay. What he's else? in a lot of shit I've never heard of, but hey. Jarhead, Jarhead is, is okay. It's Sam okay. Mendes. He's a great director. Yeah. Although if you rewatch American Beauty, it doesn't really hold up. I've heard that. It's a little uh cartoony. Annette Benning was so hot in that movie. Oh, did she get plowed, huh? By Peter Gallagher. Yeah, dude. Um oh, I got a yeah. I got a good movie wreck for you. All right, hit me. Because I'm and look, I've gotten tweets from you guys being like, How the hell was Sam not on the Criterion channel? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how it's eluded me. I really don't know. But I have watched some great ones. My wreck is fucking just the director, Billy Wilder. Oh, Any classic. Billy Wilder movie, you will be happy. I mean, Double Indemnity is like my favorite noir ever, probably. But I'm, I've obviously seen that. Watched two in the last week that I'd never seen a what? Billy Wilder. The original Sabrina with Humphrey Bogart. It's a, it's a rom com. It's a fucking great dialogue. Really, it's really fun, dude. He did Sunset Boulevard. He did. He's a fucking master. And yeah. some like it hot, which yes. is also a great comedy. So, oh, the apartment. I mean, this guy's wow. who's more consistent than Billy Wilder? It's crazy. And is, then uh, is he American? 
I think he German. is, but I think German. he spent time in Germany at least. Mm. At the very least, he worked for a newspaper, which leads to what my the record that I watched, Ace in the Hole. Ace in the Hole. Kirk Douglas. The movie is basically about a guy who's a sleazy journalist. It's so timely, dude. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. He's a sleazy journalist who basically opens by being like, I've been fired from this place, I've been fired from this place. And you're like, you know, great dialogue out of the gate. One of them's like, do you drink a lot? He goes, no, but I drink frequently. Uh, like, just great dialogue. Oh, nice. And basically he he passes this guy who's stuck in a cave and they it can't get him out. And he find, kind of orchestrates a way that the guy will stay stuck in the cave to turn it into a story and he gets the rights to tell the whole story. Cause he knows, and there's great dialogue in it where there's like shit like, um, you know, he's with a younger guy who's kind of his protege, and he's like, well, what about, like, if it was more people in the cave? And he goes, don't you understand human interest? It's one person that people care about because they want to get to uh -huh. know that person. And he's explaining why this is such a juicy story. Mm, interesting. And he turns it into a whole phenomenon that, and it's just the ugliness of the story. Yes. It's wow. incredible. Yeah. I, I, highest What's recommendations. The name again, please? Ace in the Hole. Ace in the Hole. And it's a Billy Wilder, but you can't go wrong with any of these Billy Wilder's man. I mean, you said it. Uh, Sunset Boulevard. Yeah, come on. Something like it hot was a phenomenon. Yeah, he's a master. Out. Yeah. Um, All so, right, I'm in. I yeah. love it. Billy Wilder. Good call. Real cinema. Real, real director here. Born in Austria Hungary. Right. Okay. And... Yeah. So he came over. I think he was he was a journalist in Germany, I believe. So uh... I think that was part of like maybe where he got the idea for this. Yes. Well, what is that one with Matt though? And and Lemon. On what? The, the what is that one? Lower, lower, lower. Right there. Front page? No, next to it. The fortune cookie. Oh, I've never heard of that. Yeah, With I think those should... two in it. Oh my God, have you ever seen Stalag 17? I didn't know he made no, it. No, it's on there too. It's Stalag. amazing, yeah. It's about a, a, it's a war, movie, war camp. Right? Yeah, they're in a war camp. Okay. It's great. It's great, great twists. Damn, he did comedy and drama. That's what's kind of incredible about him. Yeah, all right. Died in 2002. Mm. Wow, how old was he? It's 95. A good, run. It's a good run. I mean, love it. Yeah, he hated saw Raymond Chandler. He saw 9-11. I know, that's amazing. <laughs> he was on the plane. No, <laughs> uh, no he, uh, he and Raymond Chandler hated each other. They had beef, I remember, like they worked on Double Indemnity together, and I think Chandler, he was like, this guy's a fucking drunk who doesn't know how to write movies. Like, he's got dialogue, but you know, so they just were like this. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't talk to each other mm -hmm. afterwards. I think they wow. won an Oscar for it, though. But... There you go. I love those movie on-set beefs, you know, where the, the writer and the director are fighting. Yeah, dude. Uh, you don't see that much anymore. Uh-oh, Salicuse is a gift. It's what my wreck. Oh, Sally, baby. Let it ride. Uh-oh. It's also a gift for this, too. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know, it's going to be something pretentious if it's from <laughs> Salicuse. The red balloon. Uh, <laughs> wow. Dustin Hoffman. Tear this. Up. Lenny, wow. Oh, the acting is amazing. Yeah. I think he was nominated for this. I believe so. He got nominated for everything, right? 60s, 70s, he was always nominated. Whoa, that, oh, that's a great pose. This must have cost you $100. 20 bucks. All right, That's pretty better. cool, man. Look at that. Isn't that a beauty? That's pretty dope. What, what a great photo, too. I don't. That's almost too big to put up. No, we can get it. We'll find a place. put it on the back of the door. I love it. Yeah. Lenny Bruce. It's also my recommendation for the movie to watch. Good call, good it's call. It's a good movie. It is a good movie. I haven't uh, seen it in years. All right, let me give you a peeve. And Hit me. Stop me if I've given you the thank you. This is very nice. I want to put it in my house. <laughs> um, yeah, I hope I haven't done this one before, but we're all tied down, you know, three ladies uh, amongst us. You ever get this one? The we when she means you. You know, like, we need to change the garbage. <laughs> and before I know, I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm, like, tying it up. I'm pulling it. I'm like, what do you mean, we? You mean you? Say, so we need to get off our period. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Bolger had a great, Dan Bolger had a great bit about it. He's like, she's like, we need to do this. He's like, no, no. You, no, she goes, you need to do this. He goes, we have herpes. <laughs> Something like that. I pushed That's it. Great. But I hate the we. Well, we need new sheets. Which means like you should get some new sheets, right? It's she's giving you orders in a in a way that's just it's she's disguising orders, disguising orders. Yeah. And now I do the move where I go, yeah, yeah, get on that. Hitler used to do this. He says we need to get you in a concentration camp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do we have to do today to get you? <laughs> yeah, we need to see your papers. No, we uh, you know, 
I'm with you, man. It's, Hate it's, the this is a classic girl thing. Just say, uh, somebody's got to change the garbage. But it's also like, oh, do you want the garbage? Just change it. What, what is this? What are you putting it out in the world for? If you want to change it, change it. That's yeah. how I would do. I would how, go, why don't you just say, hey, do you mind changing the garbage? Or that. Because we, we just want the honesty. Yes. Just give it to me straight, sister. Yeah. We need to clean the litter out, the cat litter. Like, now I know it's about you. <laughs> I shit in the cat like I drunk. <laughs> like I shit in the sand. Which I'm sure is fun. You ever heard that old Clooney story? Mm-mm. What? Oh, man, he was living with some guy back when he was broke. And uh, I think as a goof, he took a shit in the litter box. Like a big, fat, smelly human shit. And the guy came home and was like, Jesus Christ, this cat. And like they put it down. What? Give it a goog. I'm, 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 I'm butchering. I'll Jesus it. Christ! It's a famous Clooney's cat story. This guy should worry less about Darfur and more about uh, <laughs> cat fur. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. Was he a Darfur guy? Yeah, yeah. That was a th- that was his cause. Oh shit! Now he's got a uh, accomplished wife. Yeah, I'm all. I'm all. I'm all out of love. <laughs> so I like that the picture is him like looking very dignified in a beard. George Clooney once shit in a cat tray. <laughs> there it is. Oh, I can't believe he found it. The Toronto Sun is out of news. I bet he's, I bet <laughs> he's the only Academy Award winner to shit in a letter box. Aha. <laughs> uh-huh. well, this is breaking. Unless Garfield won one. <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> the tale of twin <laughs> twin kitties. The tale of two kitties. All right, give me give me the punchline of that because it's a hell of a story. You might have to do a little reading there, right. Fatty, but uh, it's a it's a killer story, and it's fun knowing this guy's an Academy Award winner. He's helping Darfur. He's plowing a uh, established lady, and he's still shitting in a box. He's got a new thing coming out with uh, Affleck and Matt Damon. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Well, he also sold it to Quila, which we're trying to do. Yeah, we got to get that. Fat Cat's still in the works, folks. Yeah. Legal mumbo jumbo, but Fat Cat's coming. Make sure to email us to it. We might be drunk uh, pod at gmail.com and sign up for that Patreon. We got a lot of shit coming your way. Oh, yeah. You better believe it. And, and send us anything. Gotham Studios, uh, 39 West 38th Street, New York, New York, whatever the hell the zip code is. And uh, you'll find it on the on the web. Now, what do you got for a bit? I got a couple ideas. Let me try this one on. All righty. I wrote one down. Hit me one more time. When I argue with my girlfriend, that's the idea. It's kind of like a bad action movie. Like each one is over two hours. There's lots of explosions. By the end, you're like, what was the point of that? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So it's like, right. she, and then she'll revisit the fight in a year. That's the sequel. <laughs> Women aren't reopening old fights, they're trying to build a franchise. Yeah. Right, I call it the slow and the furious. Ah, uh, I was just thinking fast and the furious. Is there something there? Yeah, yeah. I like that. I would say blow up instead of explosion up. because there's no up. explosion in you. Because a uh, fight is a blow up. We had a yeah, blow up. Exactly. And I might say, and it was a uh, two hours I'll never get back. There's a big blow up. Ooh, that's, that's good. That's what people say after a bad movie. Like, yeah. there's two hours I'll never get back. Yeah, there's a big blow up. That's, that's good. good. There's something there. I love a good uh, analogy with a rule of threes. That's That's good stuff. There's two hours I'll never get back. I'm trying to think of more. And I like the Fast and the Furious. Kind of sounds like you in the bedroom. I'm too finished too fast. She's furious. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, there's something about like bad movie. Yeah, and you're just kind of like. Terminator. Uh, yeah. And then maybe there's something about like, this was your idea. Right. Oh, That's what yeah. you do when someone yeah, picks yeah. a bad movie. It's yeah. Like, What's bad the movie? equivalent of a chick flick like you're getting back together? You have to watch uh, one of her movies now. Something, yeah, there's something about like, mm. um, yeah, you're you're fighting as an action movie. She wants to live more like a rom com, and you're trying to get into a porn at the end. Of it. <laughs> oh, there like we that. go. You know, movie, movie, movie. Yes. Yeah, it's a movie. Yeah. So now it's like now we have to. Yeah. Ooh, like and maybe that the therapist is the critic. He's like the movie critic, you know, going like, well, you know, you made some mistakes here or whatever. I don't know. That's there's something stretch. about like, yeah. Then we we got to make it work. Yeah. I think about how to. There's something. I'll, I'll noodle with this. What do you got? Well, the funny thing too is, well, now I'm going too deep into it. Uh, damn. Yeah. All right. All right. I like this. The director. I'm trying to think. Of director. Could have read the Cliff's notes. Eh. All right. All right. Hold on. What do you got? The book was better. <laughs> all right. Uh. Okay. Here we go. Pulling up my bit. Now, is this too stupid? Um, so I have a cat, and a lot of people will shit on cats around me, not knowing I have a cat. George Especially Clooney. George Clooney. <laughs> oh, sorry, Sandy. 
and they'll shit on cats, and it almost feels like I'm dating a minority, and they don't know it. And so we'll be at a bar, and they're like, ah, oh, cat, I hate cats. I don't trust them. They're the worst. And I'm kind of like, I live with one. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like That's I, a great line. I live with one. I have to let them know eventually, like, well, you know, it's like they're, they don't trust them. They're racist or whatever. Um, like, uh, you know, Victor Varnado who is a funny comic. He's an albino. Yeah. And he is, he always said people would say the N word around him because they didn't know he was black. Wow. And so he would just have to live with that or like fight the guy or whatever it was. And that's kind of how I'm not comparing, but, uh, <laughs> I just feel like people shit on cats. And I'm like sitting here like, I like, cat. I live with a cat. You fucker. I love what I live with one is so, because it sounds so defensive. Like, uh, yeah. I mean the idea that like, I mean, my mind goes to be like people have, have said anti-Semitic shit to me and be like, "Oh, you're a Jew." Right. Perfect and you're example. Just like, yeah, I'm like I'm a, Jew, you know? <laughs> I'm a Jew. But it's funny about like, and they they dial back or they they pull back like, "Oh, I didn't know you had one." I, I don't I don't mean all cats, you know. It just sounds <laughs> like they're they're uh, backpedaling. But with you, race. but you know what? It's funny. Maybe if they don't, it's like with a, with race, they usually apologize. With cats, are like, "Yeah, I don't know what to tell you." I don't, uh, I don't yeah. like him. I'm yeah, a dog true. person. Yeah. I'm a dog person. And dogs are kind of like white people. Everybody <laughs> likes them. They, they, you know, people like cats, they don't do anything. They sit around all day. Not Asians. Yeah. Good point. What, here's the th what's interesting is like, why do we do that with, we don't do that with humans. You're like, you're like, do you like blacks? I'm a Filipino person. You know oh, what I mean? I like why do we that. do that? Why, why, why do you have to choose cats or dogs? Like, I love that. I like them both. Why can't you like them both? Good point. Why do we, it's like, why well, like this instead? Yeah, and they talk about it like a race, like, I didn't grow up with them. Maybe aliens would do that with humans. They're just like, do you like blind people? Like, no, I'm more of a white guy. That's the pets they have. You uh -huh. know? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It feels like there's something here. Also, black cat is like spooky. You know, there's all kinds of weird parallels. I've never heard anybody say they hate dogs. Yeah, usually when people say I hate dogs, it's like, I don't like animals. So you're right. right. It's like the... I hear people are afraid of dogs. That oh. could be hate dogs. They're true, just afraid true. of them. I don't like that. Yeah. Trump's hate, fear, hate. Trump's yeah, hate. People have a hate, a visceral hatred for cats. Like, yeah. People fucking hate cats. Some people love cats. Mostly they really, south. they split the room. Yeah. I think the one thing is like, the way it's different from race is like, <laughs> there's no race of people that makes you get hives. Like, people are allergic to cats. Oh, right, right. You break out. Yeah, you're like, fuck. You're like, oh, geez, do you have an Asian here? Do you have any Benadryl? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would know. be really racist. If your body was physically, couldn't be around Asians. Some, you know what I'm thinking? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I just think there's a parallel no, with, no, with I, minority and cats. Somehow. The line I like the best right now is, um, I live with one. I live. I live with like you getting offended is yes, hilarious to me. Yes, exactly. Yeah, people hate cats. They're they're open about cats, hating them. Uh, dogs are happy, go lucky, fun. Can I ask you about a bit of yours? I saw a clip of one of your bits. It was the uh, shooting Jeff Bezos into space. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I really think there's something there. Really? How, how did it go? I don't remember. What was it? It was something about how like oh how. It, this bit was something like how he keeps going into space and they were like, well, what they should have done is, um, shot they, they, should shoot, him. they should shoot. Yeah. They, they should put him on a rock and just tell him, tell him to send him to Mars, but just send it to Afghanistan. This is like at the height of the Afghanistan thing. Uh -huh. And it gets off and he's like, holy shit. Like Martians are so primitive, you know, they're just throwing that. But then I think the turn was like, but then he would start Amazon in Afghanistan and treat his workers horrible. Oh, uh, right. And then he would find out that his harsh treatment would still be better than how Afghanis treat women. <laughs> oh, my God. That was the turn of yes, the bit. that's good. But it's a long way to go. I might have to just shorten it. Like, maybe the yeah. angle is more like we talk about how Bezos, like, pregnant women in the factory, but then you're like, the, the, then they're like, uh, you know, ISIS, they're like, or, you know, they're like, well, we already do that. The Taliban's like, we already do that. Right, right. We already treat women that way. He's like our villain. But I think I it's really know. clever. I don't know if there's anything there. I think I think he's overrating the bit. I think it's like a <laughs> meh, you know. Uh, maybe something about how we can't get people out of Afghanistan, but if we boxed them up, and I feel like we can get them the next day, oh like delivery. God. Too harsh. Overnight. Overnight. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, maybe Bezos' next line. I would think more like Mexico. He's a, he's a coyote. That's how he gets people here in his boxes. Yeah. 
And it's in, it's also weird that we can't get Afghanis here, but yet we can get to space. You know, <laughs> that's wild. Yeah. yeah. Were you telling me something about Kim Kardashian getting Afghanis here? Yeah, give it a go. What's that story? She sent a jumbo jet to Afghanistan and saved a bunch of people. It's interesting too. It's like to be like because it's kind of you got to be kind of ballsy to like underpay your workers. Yeah. And show up in a nice car. Bezos underpays his employees and went to space. Right. <laughs> that's crazy. That's true. That's true. Kim Kardashian, a rabbi, helped Afghan teenage girls soccer players get safely to Britain. There you Look go. At that. See? She gets a bad rap. Oh, she couldn't pass the bar. 130 people, including 30 teenage players. Look at that. 130. Yes. Pretty good. If I was a billionaire, I mean, I say this, but I would be doing this kind of shit. It'd be fun. I mean, a rabbi. People. A rabbi was the other person. Who's the amazing? rabbi? He, he's getting, he doesn't even get a shout out. Yeah. All right. Let's plug some dates. All right, all right. I'd like to play some music underneath you talking. Oh, oh please. Is, oh, I sent you this song. Yeah. This is great winter music. Yeah. I like a little Ben Webster, oh, great saxophonist. Nice. All right, that's do your nice. dates. Isn't that nice? I'm just going to leave this on in my apartment. This is perfect. Winter, it's Christmassy. Oh, I bought a tree. You buy a tree yet? Taylor bought one. That's the best feeling. Did you get the mini one? We bought one, yeah. We bought a tree. <laughs> <laughs> we bought a zoo. All right. Did you get a, did you get a big, middle? She bought two. Two? Yeah. That's well, a little rubbing in the face on the Jew. It huh? is. She, she got a menorah, too. All right, all right. Well, maybe. so we bought a menorah. But she, uh, <laughs> she got uh, um, she got two, and uh, it was funny. She tried to play off. like She's like, that's how much I love Christmas. I bought two. I was like, you, you could have just had one, though. She's like, it was. I can't. They, I don't know how to cancel the delivery. <laughs> so she played it off like she was like, that's nice. how into Christmas. But I'm like, no, nah, you, you made a mistake. Yeah, don't but, do that uh, with the adoption agency. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I couldn't send it back. What do you got? I got a Charlotte Comedy Zone. I think I'm nipping at your heels over there. I'm at the Buckhead Theater in Atlanta. About to sell out. Hopefully we can add a show there. It's a big room. Uh, Syracuse Funny Bone. My Milwaukee Improv. Toronto at the Dark Comedy Festival. Uh, those dates are wrong. Kansas City Improv. Um, got all kinds of fun dates coming up. Go to marknormancomedy.com. This comes out the, the 12th, right, Matt? Okay, so I got um, I got Dallas this weekend, uh, Addison Improv. I got in January, I'm going to add more if I can, but right now I've got Richmond, uh, January 20th through 22nd. I've got Magoobies in uh, Timonium, Maryland, the 27th through 29th. And, and then uh, February, Hartford and Sacramento. And more coming, as well as big one coming, New York City, if you're listening, Beacon Theater in May, that should Whoa! be on sale tomorrow, so I hope you come out. Beacon, baby. Holy Merry Christmas. Shit. Big deal, so I hope you guys show out for that, because that's like New York City kid. Very big deal. Very excited about that one, so I hope I hope everyone... Uh, I mean, that's a milestone. Yeah, right I'm there. excited, so please come out, I'd love to sell it out. Holy so, uh, hell. Beacon, May 7th. I'm a little nervous now. I'm intimidated. Why? I can't, I can't hang out with you anymore. <laughs> you can do it the Beacon. You could do it. I can't do yeah, it. Yeah, you could. I can't. Maybe I'll pop by. Pop by. Can I be in the green room? Is that weird? I'd be honored. All right, all right. Wow, Beacon. May Paul 7th. Simon, Jerry Seinfeld, Sam Morrill. Hey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well... <laughs> Make sure we sell it out first. But uh, <laughs> honored if you guys will buy tickets. I believe it goes on sale tomorrow. Holy. So, what is, so, is that 3,200 seats? I think it's 2,900. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, you got that. <laughs> 29, baby. Hey, you've sold out eight Carolines in a row. A got them. Theater. Got oh, got them. Got them. Sorry. Counts. Yeah, but no, I, I hope you guys come out. And this fucking song is great. I love so it. So good. Ben Webster. If you guys haven't listened to Ben Webster, you'll love him. He's incredible. That's oh, yeah. All. That is some good good tunes. Thank you, everybody. We love Keep you. drinking. Happy holidays.